hi everyone and welcome back so in this video we are again going to talk on the coding standards before that like while you are setting up your project you always configure your ESLint so ESLint enforce a lot of rules similarly if you are using TypeScript then you always have a TSLint config uh, so those kind of configurations will enforce some kind of a restrictions on your code you have to follow some rules while uh, doing a variable naming while passing uh, variables to a functions or writing n number of lines of code in a function so if you are writing a big function obviously it will give a warning and it, it is actually enforcing you to follow some some constraint you, those kind of rules you can define in your ts lint config files but before that for core javascript or vanilla javascript you should be aware of uh, aware about all these things that these all these things which you should follow okay so in in the last video we talked about that if you are writing an object and class then you don't need to add the same context in your class so like this is the object which we created and we were like here we are actually repeating the context of car which we don't need we can actually simply say make model and uh, uh, the color of a car because the object itself is telling what we are doing here what is the context the context is a car now you can just add the properties okay as we have now started using es67 we are getting the lot of advantage of the features which are provided by es6 a uh, simple example is the default argument like uh, the data is the functions i'm creating right earlier we was we, we were just using it something like this okay uh, nickname i was just trying to get if the name is there then that is fine otherwise i will just putting it something like this now with the es6 introduced we can actually initialize this default argument here we don't need to write this line now everybody knows about this this is how we do it functions argument so whenever you are writing function function names should be enough telling you what that function contains what the functionality that function is providing and your argument should not increase more than two like if your arguments are going beyond two then you need to just change the structure of your function how it is getting the, the data like if i just create a menu this is the function i'm writing it is taking a lot of uh, uh, arguments like title body add and uh, you can see button text a lot of argument right and then we are writing some code in, inside it so instead of doing this what we can do is we can actually pass the object so the, our, our argument will reduce to a single one and you can do still destructuring in that you can actually ta pass title body whatever whatever the argument you are going to pass here i will just call this create menu and in this you can all you might be already having an object or you might be getting this from somewhere you already have like title and button text you are already getting it some from somewhere so we'll just pass menu object here right or you can just pass this whole object if you are getting it this way so your function should be small enough it should tell you what you are doing and you should not be exceeding the the argument length more than two one or two argument is the idle case this three argument should be avoidable if possible this is how we can work and functions should not do many things like uh, we always talk about uh, unit testable functions either we write class either we write just a prototype function we always end up writing functions in javascript either you write angular react or just vanilla javascript so simple thing is we are writing a function email clients and what we have is we have a client array so what we need to do is here we are doing two consider that in the current code we are doing uh, some writing some code where we are saying clients 
dot map here we are actually mapping iterating on each and every client and then we are just checking client record okay maybe you are we are actually doing a lookup this is some method we have and we are passing a client if now here we are checking client record if client record dot is active if client is active then we are sending email to email client uh, we can say send email here this is another function this is another function you might have created and you are doing client record dot email so here in a one function we are actually doing two things so how we can do it we can break it into a two where we can say function email active client so this function itself telling okay this function is just sending email to an active client so what we can do is it is taking clients as an input clients dot filter we can apply this right we just need to do what is the active client and we can have another method is active client and for each and every client we'll just call email function so email function we already have we just need to define this method in our system and what it has is we are accessing the client object and we can just say uh, const client record this is what we can do the same kind of lookup and here we can return simply kind client record dot is active client so now we have two different methods unit testable doing same thing here we are doing filtering we define a separate method to check if the client is active here we already know that what function is doing is active client should return boolean right if the function starting with is that means it is checking and will return boolean so filter it will return only those clients which are active and we are running for each and sending email so email active clients this function itself seeing is okay it's emailing to only active clients not all okay so function should do what what the definition of function is the name should tell uh, itself like uh, what we are doing sometimes we have to we end up writing duplicate codes right but we should avoid writing duplicate code in multiple functions we are executing some piece of code so in that particular case we should always isolate that either uh, the function in the util as a helper function or we should reduce that set of code and put some condition and merge those functions into one function i will just give one example and we'll try to see how we can improve this code so you can see there are two functions here i am just running a for each loop on uh, both the things developers and here here we are just checking expected salary and uh, github links so you can see we are actually doing a lot of things which are common experience we are actually calling this expected salary is something also we are duplicating these two lines can be easily and a common only thing is here we are getting github link here we are getting mba projects for a manager right so how we can merge this we are still uh, looping on to the the manager or developers here we can just check whoever is manager whoever is the a developer so if we just try to merge this into a single function we can pass a single array of you can say employees here we can get the employees type right employees dot for each and here we are getting each and every employee So we got individual employee so we can actually call 
the methods employ dot let's say if we have some kind of method already defined now this is something which is different right and that is being based on the type we are getting so here we can just check employ dot type okay now you can actually create a switch case for it instead of if else or you can actually write if else block switch employee dot type we can define a case okay if employee type is manager and do this then there would be another case we have so here data we are getting so whatever we have received we got expected salary we have received two attributes now we just need to add third attribute based on the employee type we got expected salary and experience now in this data there is a third argument which we need to add is portfolio error portfolio equal to employee dot if it is a manager then what we are doing is get mba projects if the same thing switch case we can just break this here and there is another switch case and this case is about uh, developer i need to take care of a little bit indentation while writing so if it is a developer i will just get get github links or something like that so here the we are actually returning the same here the properties will be github links instead of portfolio that's it so now we are able to do the same thing now what we just need to do uh, we just need to return data or render data same thing we are able to do in the single function we just based on the arguments okay now uh, let's take a look uh, rest of the things in the next video about how we can write clean code using these esync functionalities like object dot assign spread operator how these are helping us to write code in the cleaner way